Nearly a year ago, I started my Ponagachi series. Well, you can still expect a top 10 Ponagachi plugins video and continuing coverage. Today, I'm starting a new series on pineapple cloning. A pineapple clone is cheaper, more versatile, and more powerful than a Ponagachi. And if you attach googly eyes to it, can be just as kawaii. In this video, we'll go over which hardware is preferred, where to find OpenWRT and pineapple clone firmware, how to install, and things to consider. The Hack5 Pineapple is a powerful tool developed by Hack5 for network security professionals. Originally designed as a compact Wi-Fi auditing device, it performs a wide array of penetration testing tasks such as man-in-the-middle attack, rogue access points, and network reconnaissance. Over time, the Pineapple has evolved to include features like a web-based interface, automated attack scripts, and robust logging capabilities. The Pineapple Termidor project, created by XWARS, enables users to clone the functionalities of the Pineapple Nano and Tetra to commercially available routers supporting MIPS or MIPS architectures. Leveraging OpenWRT firmware, this project requires target routers to have similar or better hardware than the original Pineapple devices and is only compatible with binaries compiled for OpenWRT 19077. The Termidor allows for advanced Wi-Fi auditing and penetration testing on a broader range of hardware, expanding the toolkit of network security operations. The cloning process has been made trivial and can be accomplished exclusively in WebUI if you select the most compatible hardware with OpenWRT pre-installed. Otherwise, using SSH to flash the first round of firmware will be necessary. A list of supported hardware is available as well as a repository for pre-compiled pineapple clone firmware. See the links in the description. XWARS recommends the following hardware, a GL iNet GL AR150 or GL AR750S, a USB 2 2-port hub, and a generic R T5370 or MT7612U Wi-Fi adapter for use on hardware that lacks two Wi-Fi adapters. I recommend the GL iNet GL MT300 NV2 because of its cost, availability, hackability, and because I make a because tiny make commission a tiny if you use the link in the description. We'll be demonstrating the cloning process using the GL MT300 NV2 aka Mango and later the GL AR750S aka GL AR750S EXT aka Slate. Both have the advantage of being pre-installed with OpenWRT and as travel routers, they can be powered with a battery bank. The AR750S can do both 2G and 5G and accommodate a TF card, which I've since learned is just a weird way of saying micro SD card. The Mango lacks those two features, but wins on price at just about half the cost. And although the external antenna mod is probably not worth doing, I do have a very cool case for it. I'll demonstrate both in an upcoming episode. While they do come installed with OpenWRT, it is an incompatible version. Flashing pineapple clone firmware from the wrong version of OpenWRT can brick the router, so don't do that. Here's a brief description of the process. 1. Download OpenWRT v1977 firmware and then the pineapple clone firmware. Both must be specific to your router. Alternately, you may be able to compile your own pineapple clone firmware. 2. Flash the OpenWRT 1977 firmware. 3. Flash the pineapple clone firmware and you're done. Things to consider. Number one, the GL iNet OpenWRT GUI is accessible at 192.168.81. Once flashed, 192.168.81 should update with the new OpenWRT firmware installed. Three, flashed for the second time, the Pineapple Clone GUI will be accessible at 172.16.42.1.1471. You need help. With my claymash? With your life. In a perfect world, Hack5 would license their firmware for a few bucks and also maybe cut an X-Schwarz. Until then, if you're going to kidnap, um, freely adopt the Tetra and Nano Abandonware, please consider supporting x and Hack5 in other ways. Let's unbox our routers. First up, the Mango. Some paper with various writings. And then the thing we bought is in the box as well. Some cables we bought are there too, so that's good. Next, the Slate. So there's some plastic wrap. Hmm, this one has a fortune cookie fortune slip saying that bricking the router is our inescapable destiny. And then the thing we bought is in the box as well. Some cables we bought are there too, so that's good. At firmware-selector.openwrt.org, first we select V19077 and then search for our GL-MT300N-V2 router. Now at gitlab.com forward slash xwars forward slash wifi dash pineapple dash cloner dash builds, download the pineapple clone firmware specific to your router. 
I'm going to download the firmware for the GLMT300N V2. You can update firmware wirelessly, but it is not recommended for reasons of brictification. I'm going to be using an Ethernet to USB adapter. If you've seen my previous videos, you know I'm a fan of throwing as many as one ten of dollars at a problem to make it go away. Obviously, if you have an Ethernet port on your computer, you don't need the adapter. Let's get to work. Slam the power cable into the router as deftly as you can. Do the same with the Ethernet cable. Slam the other end of the cable into the USB to Ethernet adapter and then plug it into your computer. First, go to 192.168.81. Click Next. Create a password. Then on the left, go to Upgrade, then to the Local Upgrade tab, and then select your OpenWRT 19077 firmware from your hard drive. Make sure it's the right firmware. Once it has uploaded to the router, if there are no warnings, click Install and wait about 7 minutes. One nine two one six eight eight one will update, and we can see here that we have the correct firmware installed. Use the same password from before. Up top, go to System, and then Backup Flash Firmware. Scroll down to Flash New Firmware Image. Select your Pineapple firmware. In this case, GL-MT300N-V2-Universal-SysUpgrade.bin, and click Upload. If there are no warnings, uncheck Keep Settings and retain the current configuration and click Continue. Open a new tab at 172.16.42.1.1471 and keep refreshing like a crazy person for at least 20 minutes. If you get a pineapple screen, congrats, you've won! Yay! Can't be that simple. It is that simple, and cloning to the slate is exactly the same. You can't possibly screw it up. I screwed it up. Remember when I said flashing pineapple clone firmware from the wrong version of OpenWRT can brick the router so don't do that? I did that. I bricked the slate router. Full disclosure, I bricked two. Hey, it's me, Additional Dialog Mike. You can also brick it by attempting a factory reset after the Pineapple OS has been installed. In this video, we successfully cloned Pineapple firmware and functionality to an off-the-shelf travel router. We detailed the hardware considerations for the project, included links for OpenWRT and Pineapple cloning firmware, as well as important IPs and other considerations. In the next episode, we'll learn how to unbrick a slate router. We'll disassemble the router, solder pins to the ground, TX and RX traces, and then probe it with a USB to TTL serial adapter, just like super hardware hackers do. Midway through the process, we'll discover there's a way easier way to unbrick the router, and we'll do that instead. In upcoming episodes, we'll complete a Mango antenna and case mod and explore Pineapple Super Hacks or Hacks. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.